When we are looking at a coordinate plane, do we remember which quadrant is quadrant one? The top right. The top right, very nice. Do we remember which direction it goes after that? Counter yeah, very nice. So we've got our second quadrant, third and fourth. <clears throat> we'll definitely refer to our quadrants from time to time. You've got your x-axis and your y-axis. Um, so you might see some questions like if your if x is greater than 0 and y is less than 0, what quadrant are we in? x is greater than 0 and y is less than 0. So maybe let's go through, um, in the first quadrant, what's happening with x? Is it positive or negative? Mm -hmm. And the y? Positive. Okay, so we've got our x's are positive, this direction. So in the fourth quadrant, x is also positive, but now y is negative. You've got in the second quadrant, x is positive or negative? Negative. negative. And our y is positive. And then our third quadrant, we've got negative and negative. Okay, so how about if we had a question like if x is uh, less than 0 and y is greater than 0, what quadrant is that happening in? Mm -hmm. Very nice. Um, so just having a feel for what our quadrant looks like, um, plotting points, um, which we can Hello. Hey, come on in. <clears throat> uh, which we'll look at plotting some points today, and I think just starting our memory there, uh, we've plot a lot of points in our lives at this point. Um, but we're going to get into maybe what we would do with some of those points. So we're going to start with finding midpoint. It's really something that you probably hit the most in geometry. Points. And all of our rectangular coordinate things that we're going to look at today, we're going to look at midpoint and distance. Um, there are things that we don't do all the time, um, but when they do show up, we have to know how to do it. Um, so it's sort of gonna, um, it even shows up in calculus where we're looking at using the, the distance formula or finding distance and applying it in some way. <coughs> So it might help us with our midpoint question to go ahead and plot our points here. So just give yourself a little sketch where you're plotting a 2-1. It does not have to be perfect, but just something that looks like it's about 2-1 and our 10 negative 3s. Because definitely with a midpoint, it is nice to have a visual. We'll know when we're done whether that point makes sense or not for the midpoint. Does anybody remember how we find midpoint? Where is the midpoint going to be at? In the middle. In the middle. Um, how do you find a number that is halfway in between two other numbers? Divide by two. Okay. What are you dividing by two? You're right, but what are you dividing by two? The, the sum. The sum. The sum. I'm going to add them together. So think about your grades. If you made an 80 on a test and then a 90 on a test, your average for your test is adding the 80 and a 90 and dividing by two. So your average is an 85. That's how we find the number that's exactly halfway in between. Um, same thing for this. It's just that we have an X and a Y. So we're taking our X's and we'll add them together, our 2 and 10. Sometimes if our numbers are small enough, we can even tell what the middle number would be without doing this. But we'll end up with middle number is 6, which makes some sense. Halfway between 2 and 10 is 6. Same thing with the y's. So we're adding our y's together. And adding a negative 3, and then dividing by 2. And negative 1. <coughs> 
So there is technically a formula for this where you've got like x1 plus x2 divided by 2, y1 plus y2 divided by 2, but it's really something that I feel like using a formula does a disservice to our brains because if we can just think through the fact that it is halfway in between those two numbers, we don't need a formula for that. Um, we're finding the average of the x's, the average of the y's. It is an ordered pair in the end, so we've got like a 6, negative 1 as our answer. And then we can check, does 6, negative 1 look like it is about in the midpoint? Yeah, it does. 6, negative 1 would be somewhere in there. My sketch isn't perfect, but I didn't get like 6, 17 either. You know, not like way up here. Um, so definitely a good check for the midpoint to give yourself a graph and see if it is around where you think the midpoint should be. All right. um, we've also got on a coordinate plane looking at distance between two points. So going right down, we're looking at 3, 1 and negative 3, negative 4. distance a little it's a little bit harder to tell if we are correct or not by looking at our graph if we get you know the distance is 17 sometimes it's kind of hard to tell that that's 17 or agree with ourselves uh, but I think it's good to go ahead and start out plotting them as well so let's go ahead and sketch and depending on our method here <clears throat> what we've plotted could be helpful And if you want to actually label your axis, you can. Um, but for what we're doing, we don't necessarily need to label it, just getting ourselves a, an idea of what we're looking at. Okay, so we're stumped on midpoint. Does anybody remember how we find distance? Subtract. What are you going to subtract? Okay. Um, so, <clears throat> uh, think about on like a number line. Going from three to six, and um, that makes sense. We can subtract them if we're going horizontally. If we're going vertically, it makes sense to subtract. If I'm going at a diagonal, it doesn't make as much sense. Um, I can figure out the distance from here to here. Um, so my x's, if I subtracted them, I would actually be I'd be figuring out this. Um, I could figure out my distance between my y's. Could I use that to find this distance? Uh, we could use the Pythagorean theorem. Somebody paid attention in geology. He did have it last year, though, so it's, it's fresh. It's fresh. Um, okay, so between, um, now we're not just subtracting, we are taking the absolute value. What is the distance going to be between my x's, between negative 3 and 3? Six. 6, yes, very good. <clears throat> we went from a negative to a positive, so it's really 3 plus 3. And then our y's from a negative 4 to a positive 1 is 5. So whenever we have a negative and a positive like that, considering, okay, it's going to be 4 below the x-axis and then 1 above. So we've got a distance of 5. Okay, so then we could use our Pythagorean theorem here to say that this distance, what we're missing, is going to be a 5 squared plus 6 squared equals x squared. And that's just coming from Pythagorean theorem as our a squared plus b squared equals c squared. It's only used with right triangles. So I can only use it in a situation like this where I have a horizontal and a vertical, but we made that made that happen. Made it be true. And then we're just solving for x. Oh, what happened? And then depending on how our directions are, uh, we'll determine when we stop. Whenever I'm taking the square root of both sides here, 
If it said to leave my answer in radical form, then I'm just done. If it said to round to the nearest tenth, I would go a step further and put it in my calculator and see what the square root of 61 is. And we'll just stop there. Um, why in this case do I not have, I took the square root of both sides, so why do I not have a plus or minus 61? Because technically it is really. Yeah, so it's, since we're talking about distance, we have to use a little bit of common sense here to say, okay, well, whenever I take the square root of both sides, technically x would be plus or minus 61, but I'm talking about a distance, so it's the square, just the square root of 61. Okay. Do we have questions there? Is that the only way to find distance? It's my favorite way. I like using Pythagorean theorem for it. Is there perhaps a formula for distance? It's called the distance formula. Do you remember this big old radical? And you would have like your, uh, I don't know, it doesn't really matter what order we go in here. Yep. That looks pretty familiar. Okay, so this is the distance formula. I don't care which method you use. Um, my preference is Pythagorean theorem, but that's not. Um, everybody's brain doesn't work the same way. So if you would like to use the distance formula, you can. Uh, what I do want you to notice is that they are the exact same thing. And the distance formula and Pythagorean theorem are using the same values, they're doing the same thing. Whenever you're subtracting the y's, that is giving you the distance between the y values. Whenever you're subtracting the x's, it's going to give you the distance between the x's, and then you end up squaring them, and so that's going to help with making sure that they are positive, um, but that's also that a squared plus b squared part, and um, the c is squared normally, so in this case the d is not squared because we have square rooted both sides already. Um, so it is the Pythagorean theorem. Whenever I'm plugging things into it, <clears throat> just make sure whatever value you start with first. So if I start with this 3, 1, and I subtract 1 minus a negative 4, that whenever I get to the x's, I start with the same x first. So I'd have to start with my 3 minus a negative 3. We'll do what's in parentheses first. So I've got subtracting a negative 4 is going to give us a positive 5. We'll subtract a negative 3 will give us a positive 6. And notice that these are the exact same values that we got here. It's the same, the distance between the x's, distance between the y's. Since we haven't squared them yet, sometimes they'll end up being negative. Depends on what order you go in. But they will end up being positive in the end. We'll still end up with our 25 plus 36. And our square root is 6. Okay. So it is up to you, and there are several things that we will do like this where I'll go ahead and show a couple of methods for things. Um, so that's where uh, we've got to be kind of math savvy enough to know what makes sense to us and like, okay, this is a way that I'm going to do this in the future. Um, and also to kind of make some connections. Sometimes that helps to see other methods, see why one of them works. Um, anyhow, questions on this is one? I will say if you're planning on using the distance formula, I won't be giving that to you like on a quiz or a test. So if you're using the distance formula, you will have to know it by heart. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and try, try this one on your own. So you're finding the distance between negative 2, 1 and 5, negative 3. And we'll do the same at the end. You can just leave it in radical form.
yeah, so few students that I can actually like walk or I like make <laughs> my way around like seven times. <laughs> no, no, I'm slow my walkers. So. Um, so we should get the square root of 65, and that's while we're in, because the bell's going to ring for lunch or not. Um, if you're needing to see that, um, you would either have, which it looks like we all chose Pythagorean theta in there. <coughs> I think it's e easier as well. So you should end up with your distance between your x's is 7, distance between your y's is 4, and then whenever you're adding those, mm -hmm, you end up with a 65. Enjoy your lunch. Mm -hmm.